Module 7, I think. Module 7? Yeah. No, I don't believe so. Why? It says it's due like July 26. Oh, it was called, it was at one time, at another time, it was called a different module. So sometimes when something originally was called one thing, it has a hard time disconnecting that name to it. So I'm going to show you what we got here, the old projector going. So, I'll show you a little bit about where we are. We're splitting a module. I think I told you guys that Thursday. We're kind of splitting a module. So, I did um, module three and a half was introduction to hexagon, PCD, MS, CMM quiz. Um, it was a short little video and then some questions on it. And then this week, we are, we've already done some of this. Uh, we've done the group hexagon CMM RDS lab. That's where we use quick measure. Came and measured a couple of dimensions. Um, today we're going to start on um, PCDMAS. PCDMAS is the measurement software that is um, by far the most used software out in the world. There are other ones out there, Calypso from Zeiss. Every manufacturer, I mean, it's Coke, Pepsi, you know, and so there's other options out there. PCDMAS is like programming G code where um, some of the other ones are kind of like plug and play kind of stuff. So you learn PC Demos, you can go anywhere and do anything after that. So I have a student right now who went to work for R&D uh, up in Lee Summit. He is the QC manager for R&D. One of the reasons that he got that job is because he knew how to do hexagon PC Demos. And so starting out like 25 bucks an hour to start, sits in an air conditioned room all day and tells people that his parts are bad or that their parts are good or bad. So, Pretty good job. I mean, it's it's a it's a great place to be. So um, you learn this, you'll be able to you may, you'll be able to knock out Zeiss on. You'll look at Zeiss. Do you want to mill around the outside of it and do these answer the questions? We don't want to do that. that we can always go backwards, but it's hard to go forward. So um, we've done this. We're going to start on this today. Uh, we'll start in alignments. And um, so with inside of that, inside of four, and we'll, we'll really be working on four all week, um, there is a PC Demos 2021 version one portable manual in there. This is a portable CMM. There is a manual inside of it for you to look at. It's a pretty lengthy uh, PDF. I would not print it. I would not not look at it though, because um, I like you might be thinking, you didn't say we need to memorize it. I am saying you do want to familiarize yourself with it. There are a lot of parts that we don't need, but there are definitely some parts that we will need in there. They talk about vision and they talk about, about a lot of other stuff inside of there too. So at least familiarize yourself with it um, so that when we get to it, we can um, be at least somewhat active in it. Um, and then I've got an alignment and um, constructions video. So um, alignments are how we align the part. We're gonna be working on this part today. This is small hexagon, small demo block, I think is what it's called. Um, won't necessarily be the same parts in there, but it'll be the same principles that you're going through. So constructions 101 and alignments 101, just a really basic overview. Um, you won't, don't be surprised to find when we do module four's quiz, um, questions on constructions, alignments, and questions from the PC Demos.
like these, you will need these. If you will notice, uh, when, once you get these, there, there's a dimension here, I believe, of 800 thousandths. Um, that's here to this step. The, the back sides of them just have not been milled off yet. Okay, so we'll just catch that in another class. So what you're really doing is you're checking the dimensions of everything that is machine minus this stuff that is sawed off. Okay, so uh, that's what you'll be checking. You've got everything that we've worked on um, is accessible to you as far as digital height gauge, height gauges, micrometers, gauge blocks. Measuring the slot would be a good gauge block. Uh, measurement. You want to deburr your parts. Some of them are deburred, some of them are not. Uh, and then when you're done today with your parts, even if you don't get done today with your parts, that's okay. I want you to leave your What I want to do is um, bring up. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up PC Demos uh, on the screen. Get a little zip tie in to try and make this thing a little more easy to move. I hope that I can stretch over there. I believe that I can. And actually, if you want to, you can even check this part or check your part using the CMM. You just, you're just you going to have to do it at a different time probably because we'll spend most of our time today doing this. Okay, so what we've got is just our normal, um, our normal screen up here. This is just the laptop. And then we'll go to PC Demos and to turn PC Demos on. Probably the easiest way is just go down here into Windows. And... I believe it's somewhere about midway. Um, I hope that it is 2020. What we want must be release one. I'm going to go online. Possible. I moved this around earlier so that hopefully we can get um, all of the uh, pieces off of it. And we don't necessarily have to get all the pieces today, but we need to. At some point, be able to measure everything on here. I've made a couple, or I, I have one of these. Um, when we start talking about alignments, this is going to start to be kind of important for you vectors. Um, and so this will, this block will show you all to pass these around. Um, understanding how vectors work and how vectors work according to PC Demos will really matter. Um, it's it's less complicated than you think, and how you hold this thing will determine. Um, kind of the way that the vectors work, and so if you'll if you'll hold it um, the right way, where x zero y zero, so you're looking down, you've got your z plus plane, and just like a mill. So if I hold this here, my my vector for um, this is so for think x y z, okay? So um, my I have no vector of x or y. I'm just pointing up, so it goes zero zero one. So x, y, z one is up. So what do you think z negative is? Zero negative, zero, negative, zero, zero, negative one, okay? Um, so now if I point to the x positive direction, if you look right over here, x plus work plane, vector one, zero, zero. So it's just that one direction. x negative is negative one, zero, zero, okay? So then you go y, so you go, so what's y? Y is 0, 1, 0, because it's in the Y position. See what I'm saying? So it goes X, Y, Z. 
Forward is a positive direction, so it's a positive number. Negative is a negative direction, and so it would be a negative. So first time that I win, I'll pass those around. You can go that way, and then it goes this way. This one is a squeezy, so if you get stressed out, you can squeeze it. Please don't bite it. Um, if uh, you do, that would be weird, but you could have it if you bite it. But so I took this class very first time. I went to Milwaukee and um, trained with Mil the people from Milwaukee Tool. And the guy, the guy who taught the class talked vectors for like three days. And I was like, I do not know what you're saying. And he was like, all you gotta do is know vectors and you'll know everything. I was like, I will know nothing because I do not know what you're saying. And so I did what you guys do often is I didn't say anything. And so I passed the class, but I like guessed my way through some stuff. So I came back and I was like, I still don't know what you're talking about. So I went then to another um, hexagon PCDMS class, and the guy said, just replace vectors with x, y's, and z's. Okay, and so it's it's just z, y, and x. And I was like, why didn't somebody say that? And so the only reason why it's vectors is because when you're working numerically, there's no place to put letters. So they go x, y, and z, or 0, 0, 0, or 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 0. And so all you're doing, so the first category is x, the second category is y, and the third category is z. So 0, 0, 1 is z plus y. Okay. Does that help? Does that make sense? Yes, sir, when there's different. Yeah, that makes me want to check my zipper. No. So, um, did you know that? Nah, I'm going to tell you a zipper trivia. Um, okay, so what happens when I open up PC Demos is I come to um, a file folder option where it might ask me, so here's some of the last programs that you ran. And so I can go from one of those, I can start a new routine, I can open a routine that already exists. So a routine that already exists could be complete or incomplete. Um, it would be drawing in a model, bringing in, importing in a model, and then um, creating some parts from it. In PC Demus, you will not do any drawing. You're only going to be importing in models. So hopefully we can find the hexagon small demo block as a model, pull it in, and then start doing some stuff on it. No guarantees. Lots of students use this, so uh, it could easily, so the format of the model matter? So it's an STL. Oh, does it have to be an STL? Uh, mm, I'm sorry, it's an IGES file. Okay. Yeah. So you, I think you can bring in STLs, but I think you got to do some converting, and it also wants to try and do a mesh. And I'm, I might be wrong on that, but it is an IGES file is about the best way to bring something in. That's what PC Demus would prefer. And I'm just going to call it, um, this is machine 105, and today is 9 underscore 21 underscore 2021. No revisions, we are going to work an inch. So PCD must comes up in a blank. We're going to go to... Um, my little there it is cat import we're gonna bring in just okay this is now our part set it like this so the word just carry over What's that? The origin will carry over. Origin will carry over. Yep. 
I'm going to plug the mouse into it. Um, if you've got a mouse plugged into it, it does make life a super ton easier. Okay, so this is our part. X, Y, and Z is uh, the trihedron or datum is here up in this corner. Everybody see that? So that means all of my dimensions will be derived from there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. Um, one thing that PCDMS you do a lot of is you do control home and control end a lot. And so you can get to the top and then get to the bottom. So we want to start down at the bottom. Uh, does anybody remember what we did the other day as far as doing some planes? Plane, plane, plane. plane. Yes. So we can go in and do our magic wand. It's probably our easiest way to start this thing. And so we can drag this thing up. And we are going to do an alignment. And we can do plane, line, line, plane, line, circle, plane, circle, circle, plane, line, point, plane, cylinder, line, point. This doesn't have plane, 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 so we'll, we'll work from it. Um, so we'll go plane, line, line. What do you think should be our plane on this? So a plane is a, a surface, uh, could be a side, could be a, it, it just can't be a two dimensional line. Okay, so it's a three dimensional surface. So looking at this part, or even looking at it on the screen, what seems like should be the natural plane on this part? Face is face you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so typically, the, it's the Z face up, oft, oftentimes. So on this one, the plane, best plane is going to be this. You might say that because this is a larger plane on this, because the datum, datum wise, this is a larger plane surface. Um, this one, since it already has a trihedron attached to it, we're going to use Z up as our plane. And then for lines, we want to do our our two longest lines. So we can go this line and then this line here. So. That should be able to trap all of our stuff in. Who wants to come up and do this? Okay. Hmm. I will. Since they. You want me to come back? Up? Yeah. Why don't you? Yeah. I'll move. I'll scooch, and you can. You can take it. So all I'm doing is. You already selected. So yeah, we're gonna go in. We did. So here we go. Plane line line. And then take hits for a plane. So is what it's telling you. Follow the prompts. Huh? Follow the prompts. Oh no, I got some mobile. What did I do? What's wrong? Access to the You're good. It was it was in. Oh okay. It is no longer now. So. So why is one on the face? Whatever. Okay. Two hits for the line. So yeah. Go 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 your long line first. Zero zero is back here? Um zero zero is down here. So here's this cone. It's down here. So go like here and here. So how John is is checking is acceptable. I see it for a second. Yep. PCD must would. more straight on one two um, it's going to prefer that rather than to do something like this it will take the hits either way because sometimes you can't you're you're forced to do that but um slip over 
that what it's telling me in Exodus that we're going to look for? Pro possibly. I mean, you get like it. It. It's just trying to. It's trying to kind of feel out where it's at. Okay, so now John has created an alignment. And so now if I were to take and do something like this. Where are our trihedron going? Our trihedron is down here. So we really probably should reassociate our part with this when we do this. So it doesn't automatically line it up. It it will, but we gotta get we gotta get to the right spot first. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to take a measurement in order to do that. Once we take a couple measurements, then it's going to it's gonna be able to catch us all up with everything. Uh, right now it sees the alignment as being here. And it's already aligned it on the screen. Um, it just hasn't really necessarily aligned our part with it. Um, okay, so we have an alignment done. Next thing we're going to do is start taking some measurements. So um, let's let somebody else come up and we'll measure. Uh, John, you decide what they're going to measure. Okay, so from uh, you, you, what do you want them to measure? Uh, make it simple. Let's make it simple. Let's go with that angle. Okay, measure that angle. Okay. Is that something we haven't gone over yet? Sure. So that could be a plane, or in this case, I think probably a line might work pretty good. Who wants who wants that? Let's just go. We'll go. Yeah, yeah. So a line can be two hits. And so all you're going to do is come in and you're going to check this little look. It's a it looks like a comb, but it's a ruler. So you're going to come in. I guess if it's a ruler. Yeah, I mean. It just kind of looks, it's a, well, it's a, it's a poorly graphic ruler. So you're going to measure in line. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to click on it, and it's going to ask for two points. You can do so more. The slope here? That slope. Is, is that yeah, so just the two hits on that line. The longer you stretch it, the further out it goes, the better it is. And then slip the button. Cool. So there says measured line. So it's line number three. Okay. So now um, you can pick. Uh, so we'll just go around the room. We'll just kind of snake this thing through. So you can pick who does, or not who, but what they are going to check next. These holes. Okay. Let's, yeah. All right. Let's do, come on. So that would probably be a goofy thing to measure second. Would it matter at all? So what I would probably, let's just do one of these holes. So one just of these holes in a circle. Ones. Yeah. So you're going to go to the ruler. You're going to go to, okay, okay. And then right here to the circle. And you're going to do three hits. And then just a hole. Not a What's hole. But a singular hole. I don't know that you're touching anything. You have access. Yeah, keep moving it around. Are you on the diameter of the hole? Okay. Okay. And then did you hit okay when you're done? Uh, yeah. Okay, circle one is there. All right. Next. So you get to pick what they're going to do next. Um, from these choices, we're going to make choices limited just a little bit. So. You can do uh, point, line, plane, circle, cylinder, cone. If it's someone you hate, if you uh, hate your um, person behind you, then you can have them do maybe cone or sphere. Um, any of these slots, you get to pick. Uh, yes. It can even be another circle. Okay. So we'll just do we'll do another line that'll help us get the step. Come on up. So we're going to flip over here. We're going to do, we're doing this face. So what we'll do is we'll just call this a, we're going to call this a plane. Okay. That way we can get some depth and it's going to be off of this plane. So we can come in here. 
grab uh, the ruler. We can grab a plane measurement. Plane measurement takes three hits. Did you say this space? Uh, yes. Then you can't go with that. Right? Okay. Great job. So even though a plane only needs three hits, more hits makes that more accurate, okay? Within reason. I mean, if you need, if you do 17,000 hits, there's probably a chance that, yes, it would get more accurate, but there's also some outliers. Outliers are wild hits that can cause erroneous uh, measurements, okay? So like you have like 700 really good hits, but like, like a couple of hits you turned around and beep, beep, beep and it, you caught a couple of them, you could tell the machine anything that's more than a certain percentage, you just don't pay attention to it. So in case you get some hits like that. Okay, so um, if you would tell, tell me what we're gonna check next. You have to measure height. No, no. Where at? Do the height from the space to... So we did that when we did plane. Oh. So plane actually will create the height between those two things. So you could do um, cylinders, you could do circles, uh, you could do sphere, you could do a cylinder. I mean, if you hate Jason, then you could do this wonky cylinder that runs through there at an angle. You know, you do whatever. You do cone. If you want to just, you know, you want to punch him in the face. You know, that's practically a punch in the face. Is cone. I'll just do diameter of one. Uh, Large Diameter of the large circle on top. Come on down. Oh, thank you. Okay, you're a circle. Okay, grab the ruler. This one? No, the thing that looks like a ruler. Yeah. Uh, that's a point. That's it, circle. You can do three points. The only time that you can do one point is if the hole is smaller than the ruby that's on the end where you sit down on top of it. So like you kind of go into that hole. Of it, would, it would do the position of the circle. It would, it would uh, try to do the diameter of it because it knows the size of the ruby and how far down it is. It would be very much inaccurate though. That's where you- have to know the elevation part and all that. Yeah, as long as you have your alignment right, it would be able to do it within reason. Um, but you've got to know exact size of your ruby, which it should know. Um, I would consider that to be, that's, that's a gauge pin measurement for a small hole like that. Okay, big circle. Minimum of three hits. You can walk all the way around, however, whatever's most comfortable for you. It's a nice looking hat. Thank you. I did. Um, so I have shirts and hats for you guys, but they're all like, everybody's got to be an XL and some of y'all like chance the rapper back there. He's not. So we're going to wait and we've been asked to not do shirts this year, but there, we're going to come up with a new shirt. We're going to do the dopest machine tool shop socks you've ever seen. So that's what we're doing. Um, did it do a circle or mm, I don't think so. I don't see that it did the circle. So I'm looking at a plane um, that you might have done. You might have blurred it a little bit. So let's see where that's at. Um, okay. So I think this is you. I'm going to delete it. So I think it's wrong. Yeah, I think it's wrong. So we're going to put this here and we're going to redo circle. And okay, so you're going to get around that diameter of that thing. Okay, so once it does three, it's assuming that you're doing a circle. Excellent. Okay, next victim. He's ready. He needs you to tell him what he's doing. Um, 
That has been measured height. Um, so, so, like, diameter of, of it has not been. Do you want me to do the diameter? Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's cruel and unusual, but that's fine. No. Um, so you're going to do, this is a circle. So you're going to go right through here. You can't do the complete circle, but you can do part of it. So you're still going to do it as a circle. Yeah, grab the, yep. No, yep, yep. Uh, second one, yeah, three points. I think you did too. There we go. So the next one down, that's that single point. Right? Single point one, yes. Okay, just smash into it. I'm sorry. Forty thousand dollars, no big deal. No. So how do you do? You just put it on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're gonna set it on it and like like mm, around. So we're gonna go. So I've got my buttons here. And so it's attached, it's not going to move. And so I can hit, so this is my big button. All right. Sure. Yeah, so I would hit it. Um, Now I'm going to hit this button right here. See, there's a little toggle. Yeah. And then I'm going to hit that one. And then it creates a circle. I'm going to delete it. I can yeah. Do it. yeah. Man, I picked like the worst spot for me. Yeah. Delete. Spot me up, please. Okay, so it will not. So. He's clicking, but nothing's happening. And so you're you're in the right you're in the right thing. Take his first circle. You're there. Your problem is is the arm is now gotten so close. Yeah. So now you can probably take the hit. There you go. Uh, see, there you go. Yeah. Whenever the arm, when you click it and nothing happens, it means that you you're it's it's up too close and it can't it can't quite decide where it's at. So you're gonna pull it down, get it to a different position. You're terrible. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. That was a terrible hit. So one of the ways that you can do that is to come at it from here. So see how you're more straight on this way? Yeah. Like a lot of people don't, yeah, they just don't want I'm to move that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're breaking which we know, we know a lot yeah, of stuff about you. Can I just restart you. this? Yeah. Yeah, your yeah. fast list told us where you live and you're your credit card number, so <laughs> yeah, you're not getting away, not getting away from us. Uh, credit card number. Yeah, yeah, we got a credit card number, and if you don't, we'll file for a Discover card for you. Yeah, with twenty nine thousand percent interest, and we're getting our money. Okay, happy. And then the other little button. Oh, that's messed up. Is that mine? It does not look right. Yeah. Should you redo it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to. Okay. Yeah, remember that when we reverse it and you get to pick it for Jason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And hit the back button like the exactly. Tip, but you can hit the yep. So you can roll this button backwards. Oh yeah, just and it'll back. take the hit away. Oh okay. Yep. Okay. Just an undo. So go ahead and hit OK and let's see what it does. And you, you hit the little left rolly. Yeah, there you go. That's what it did. Okay. All right. So um, 
your table mate is next. Mm -hmm. So decide what Cameron is going to do. He could do another hole. So he could do. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. We we eventually would like to get everything on here. We can even do stuff on the sides. I mean, I don't really want to do. Not really 3D features, but you can do anything on here. Um, like in between them. You, you could, yeah, you could do that. So in between those two things. Um, so we could do probably do it. We'll do it as uh, just a couple of lines. So yeah. So that's what you want, Cameron, to do this big slot. Yeah. Okay. So Cameron, you're gonna do this big slot. You're gonna need to do a line on this ledge and then a line on this ledge. Okay. So you're gonna do two things. Okay. So a line from here to here and then a line from here to here. Um, line, so you're going to come in, hit, hit, that's okay. a line, line, hit, hit, that's a line. Okay. That way we can determine the width of that section. Could you do that as a plane? If you, uh, you could not do it as a plane. You could do the face of that as a plane. So like you could do the bottom of that slot as a plane, but so not the top one? Um, probably not because I don't know that there would be enough ledge there to grab into. Probably not with that probe. But if you had a smaller probe, you probably could get in there. I don't know that you could get quite enough depth into it. Okay, so you got one line, and now you're ready for another line, correct? Yep. I think you're still in line. Yeah. So don't be afraid to. This this baby's super super mobile. Contortionist. This, yeah, we got this from a circus. So, oh my gosh, you want to hear circus? We we went to uh, so when we went to Wichita Sunday night, we check in to our hotel, and um, the thing just says State Fair. And he goes, the guy at the hotel goes, "You guys are from the State Fair," and we're like, "Yeah, yes, we." Because it's State Fair Community College, but like the, the guy from the hotel has no clue who we are. He thinks that we're from the Kansas State Fair. So we're just like, yes, we're carnies. And he's like, that's cool. And like, so we go check out, like, whatever. No. All right, you got both your planes? Yes. Great. Or go both your lines, sorry. Um, all right, check what he will do next. Wait, what? This part of the circle right here? Um, what? The hump? Yeah, the hump. Yeah, let's do the hump. Okay. So you're gonna come in and do this curve right here. Yeah. So it's gonna be a circle. So you're gonna you're really gonna have to be cautious because when you get into those kind of ledges, you wanna make sure that you don't get into the next one. Mm -hmm. So I might be like um, bring it in like this. So something about right here. Yeah. Over to about here. That's the zone that you wanna be in. Yeah. Okay. Man, that's hardcore. I'd be a lot nicer to somebody than me. That's not true. I wouldn't. I would so it's like this one here? Yeah, it would be that one there, yes. You're doing a half circle in the back? Yeah, so like the, he's right doing like the, the, the large, the one that protrudes out. It doesn't protrude out past the surface. Just a radius. Just a radius. Don't forget that the three you I never did. Oh. No, I even so uh, I Mark Forge, they knew that it went bad, and so I contacted them on, and they're like, we cannot make a print either. They're yeah. like, the model is perfect. I said, yeah. I said it, it's from Hexagon. I was like, this is not even my model. I said it's an IGES file. I converted it to an STL file. And he's like, well, something happened in the conversion. He's like, we'll try to print it here, and they had the exact same thing happen. He's like, it's something in the IGES file. We have no clue what's doing it, but we can't make it happen either. He literally said, if you can get a print, it's a print. Tell us how you did it. I think, like, no, not so. All right, I heard Jeff say he wanted to do a cone or a sphere. Or a sphere. Well, you can't change the game. You've got to make the determination. Well, let's do this one. Cone. Cone. So it doesn't really specify, so just hit it. So take hits for a cone is typically three high, three low, or three low, three high. Um, yeah, so what it's looking for is basically two circles, a small circle, large circle. It's then going to do the math to figure out where it goes. Yeah. 
So it doesn't know where it ends, but by you, I've already done a plane. You've created the end point for it to trap it. Uh, and then where it intersects creates the, then the bottom point for it. For it. I don't know which one I missed. I don't know. Unless I've got backspace. Yeah, it's there. It's there. Yeah. You got it. I just didn't see it. Okay. Um, yeah. Eli talks trash on you all the time. Circle here, then. Yeah. The spear. Spear. Yes. So spear is very much the same. Um, you're going to take hits high, high and hits low, or low and high. Really, don't, at this point, on this part, it won't really matter. Yep. Spear. Yep. So that would be the same for like the opposite, like a, like a ball. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's um, a sphere cavity or a protrusion or a boss. I would hit probably three or four low and hit three or four high. So it says you only have to hit four, but I would hit, I would get multiple hits in there. If it's, if you can't, if you're clicking and nothing's happening, yep, move that arm around. And you can still hold the button up. You can still scan it if you want to as well, yeah. The only problem that you do run into with scanning is that if, when running the arm and scanning, you have to have pretty good control over it because you sometimes either want to run off, hit the hole, you kind of go wonky. Like, I think scanning sounds fun, but it doesn't necessarily always work out right. For the points on the bottom, do I want to bottom it out in the hole? Or just... uh, I think you could bottom it out in the hole. Okay. Cool. So yeah, it's trying to determine what you've got there. Okay. Yeah, but it's still measure like if you just like set it on the top, like down and around the bottom. Scanning? Yeah. Yeah, it will scan. So arms always scan. Okay, so arms come with scanning capability. This one does not have scanning capability. So whenever we're probing something, that is not scanned. So it will not sit on a diameter and scan around it. You can do like 250 hits around it um, to where it would almost appear to be a scan. Yeah, so it would be like, and then moves automatically. So, um, okay, so you are determining what he's doing. There are, there is a, we have not done a cylinder. You could go any so anything through here could be a cylinder. This angle could be a cylinder. You could do these circles. Um, do the depth in here. Um, let's do the outside circle. The inside of the outside circle, the large circle. Man, yes. that's easy. So all I'm doing is an outside diameter. Outside diameter of that counter bore. Yeah, I think that's what he's asking. Awkward, I guess. Always. It does. Yeah, I and mean, that's really the point of just playing with it now is for us to get the, the movement of the arm, you know, so that we can do this thing and um, not have it in some type of axial error. Um, when, when you, what it's called, when, when you get angles like that, it's called singularity. Uh, when you start to get lines or motors, well, in this case, um, encoders, in the alignment like this or bent way too far forward, they don't know which way to measure. So like the robot, um, when you guys get to the point of like 135 and 118 and you start doing the robot, you never want the robot to be straight out like this because it doesn't, when you say move up, it doesn't know which joint then to move up. So the robot can move like this 
or it can move like all these individual ones. And so if you're saying, hey, I want you to move by the tool or the world, it'll just move like this. But when you get everything in singularity, it doesn't know which one to do. So a robot, you always want to leave kink just a little bit. In the same way, the arm, you always want to just try to get this thing as kind of stretched out as further away is better than closer. Okay. I'm not sure I can get the inside of that. Chance, you're doing the outside of this inside boss area. Okay. Okay. See what I'm saying? Okay. Um, you guys who are one-on-ones, I think, uh, did Clint tell you he wasn't going to be here Monday and Tuesday? Mm -hmm. you, still class. you still get to come in, yes. So uh, hopefully those will be just shop days for you guys. I don't know, we've got, I don't know where you guys are at. But um, so, yeah, I'll be here. So we'll just keep on rolling. When I was at Wichita, they had this big five-axis CNC mill that had a 3D printer on it from Moiseki. And then they had this 3D printer that they were literally printing at a round back chairs. A what? A lawn chair. And they were, they did, they had like coffee tables that they printed. It looked like they had a giant cock gun. Just how long that like that? I didn't even ask. At that point, I was like mesmerized. We walked into this room, no kidding. Probably shouldn't even have this on the recording while I'm doing it. But so when we walk into this room, it says something, some type of initials on it. And um, I see that it's got like tarps that can roll down over the windows. And so we go into this room and he goes, nothing in here is ours. We can't afford any of these things. This is all stuff that's from somebody else. And so they're Wichita, it's all, so it's like aerospace stuff. And this 3D printer, I am not kidding you, is two stories tall. And um, there, was, there were like four big giant robots, and these robots were polishing uh, wing components. So they had like an air table that kind of, you know, moved around, and then they had a sander on it. And so what they do is this, this these, this research company comes in and they research all these things and they use their facility to, to do all the machining. They developed this thing, so they developed um, a, a, a UAV a drone. And after they developed it, they put it into production. They made all the molds and stuff there. They put it into production, did all the fiberglass stuff on it or composites on it. And then when they were done, put them into production, they gave them all the stuff. That's pretty cool. It's so cool. But the guy, the guy tells me, he's like, so that sounds so awesome, right? I was like, yes. He's like, it's too expensive to rent. I was like, that is like having somebody giving you a rocket and you can't afford rocket fuel for it. He's like, that's exactly what it's like. He's like, we can't really afford to do the filament for it because it's so much, you know. It was a resolution. Like, so. Thick. It was yeah. very coarse, but it's it's got a, a metal ground into it, and they machined it all, and so they were making like mold cavities, and they were mirror like like they looked like they had rain X on them. The water would drip off of it so smooth. It was so cool. But he's like, this is so cool. He's like, this is not us. He's like, we didn't do any of these things. I was like, I would have not said that. I would have said it was us. You know, but he was. He was very cool. They were very, very good to us. If you didn't live here and you lived in Wichita, I would totally tell you to go to WSU Tech. They were very, very good to us. Um, okay, so I think we're done there. Um, so I'm going to just bring this baby down. Um, so what we can do now is we can create, uh, well, actually, we essentially created a whole measurement system uh, or process in doing this. So we can go right over here to uh, this little execute and it's going to just start to tell us what to do. And so we can come in here and we can um, measure the plane. And then we can take two hits on the line. Ah, wrong line. I'm back up here. 
it's not. You gotta do the alignment. That that is a line. Wrong line that we were still in the alignment. Plane. So here comes the problem in doing this. Two hits on the line. So now, um, two hits on another line. From this point on, the only way that I know what this was is by asking each one of you what happened, right? So I know that that's there. Um, take one of three hits on the circle. Uh, who had the first circle? Uh, so I think it was a hole over here. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Now we had a plane, which was this plane over here. So if I ask you when you're initially starting to take three hits in a circle, and I take five, when you come to run this, are you going to take three or <clears throat> make it take five? Great question. So let me let me back up to what I what I was getting at. Okay, so we can do the alignment, but the only way we're going to know how to do this alignment is if we closely remember what happened. So what we need to do on something like this is we need what's that? Yeah, we need to give some kind of label to it. So we can come in here and I can say top top of part. Okay, so to answer your question, um, I can set for a certain amount of hits, number of hits. It, it, it was a, it's a plane, so it really it hits four. Uh, but I can set how many hits I want to do. So uh, top of this, so I can here do this measured circle. I don't know what circle it is. If I want it to take more hits. And I want you to label the top of the part, I think, with an angle. Did I? Ah, thank you. Angle line. Oh, that was the alignment. And that was after the alignment. So this is the that's the, that's the plane. Here's the alignment. Here's the angled line. Measured circle. Is this one single hole on the uh, bolt circle? Um, looks like we have some other alignment things that have happened through there. So what we want to do is we want to when we're creating a measurement routine, we want to make sure that we're identifying everything that we do so that we know what's going on. Because um, the, the intention is for you not to necessarily run this, but for you to be able to create an, a measurement routine that the next person, so John creates a measurement routine, um, Chance can run it. Um, so so that's, that's the idea that we're trying to get to. Okay, I'm gonna clean this one up just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna give you guys some time to do all of your QC on your part, and then um, we'll see if we have time at the end. We'll run this thing all the way through. So you can grab your toolboxes and work out of them, uh, or those. You should grab gauge blocks. If you'll notice, um, I'll just QC here for a second. Nope. Uh, you'll notice this does not have individual tolerances on the parts or dimensions themselves. It has a tolerance block. Tolerance block is very common. One place beyond the decimal point is plus or minus five thousandths. Two places beyond the decimal point is ten thousandths. Um, three places beyond the decimal point is plus or minus two thousandths. So all I'm asking you to do is to put your actual dimension of what you get next to it. You don't even have to tell me if it's in or out. Um, this is data May. This surface, uh, once you try and figure out what this is asking you uh, with this little symbol, and then there's another symbol here, uh, G, D, and T, that's asking you to be within 2,000. So um, surface finish is asking you for a 63 and a 125 in a couple of places, so check those as well. Um, so you've got a little bit of time to do that. So if you would start on that, that would be super. You've got really about 30 minutes. It won't take you 30 minutes. Yeah, 
I will momentarily. You're right. I only printed 10. I should have printed 11. I normally print 12, and I have too many. And I even knew that. Give me just a second. I mean, do you really want ten? I wanted, um, what is it? It's not down to the tenths, is it? Yeah. No, I want down to what the tolerance is. This is 
Is probably like 900 and some change. Oh, or like measuring the height of the ledge and subtract that. You could. There is a digital height gauge sitting right there. Yeah. You could use it as well. Okay. Stack it up with gauge blocks. If it's if it's loose enough tolerance wise, you can do it with the depth part of your um, calipers. Uh, like feeler gauges, those are in that NC3 box. Go for it. Next to the dimension. So you do want that measurement right here. And my suspicion is it's longer than 800. Oh, yeah. We probably, we milled it 850. I think it's 23,000. Over. It's not counting. Okay. Out there, and the there are um, actually there's some in this toolbox. There's three sets of them part way down.
You said you can't track that all front. No. So if you use that height gauge, yeah. you, so you could just come here, bring it down, zero it. Yeah. And then I'll just say, this goes here, you can this all through right here. Absolutely. I just want to go right down. 100%. Do what? How do I convert the fractional decimal to the like the R point oh eight decimal? Um, I think there's a fraction decimal conversion on your um, machine cap pro. Is that what you're asking? Okay, so I'm going to do here, because this is a different step, all the way around. I'm trying to measure that. Point eight, three, three. Wait, it's a different step all the way around. It wasn't square in the box, but no, no. Um, but it's coming, but coming from the top, it should be the same thing. Fair enough. You can kind of see the angle on it there. Yeah, yeah. So when they flip it, then when they put it down in the middle of the back side, it'll be square. But I mean that that should be square to the to the part, just not to the stock. Right. So what would that be? So that that is, to that. Sure. Okay. Well, I tried to convert one and I converted it into uh, hourglass degrees, and I'm trying to get it to a fractional form. Okay. Um, what what? Show me what you're trying to. Can I borrow this just for a second? Yes. Uh, that right there. I'm trying to convert that into its fractional form so I can determine oh. which, like, which uh, angle. Oh, so that's a radius. Though. Radius, yeah. Okay, so you don't want you don't want that. Uh -huh. So you want um, point zero eight. How do I do that backwards? Okay, so that's a different. What I would do is I'd go to one of those charts, okay. and I would look at what the closest fraction is to 0.08. Okay. Was yours small? I guess I'm not sure the best way to do this. From here to here, but I can like grade block or height grade it. Yeah, be fine. Um, optical comparator is available as well. If that's if that's an option. If you want to do if I think I have it in a fraction, how do I convert that to the radius? But the radius that is the radius. So so if you, you you so what do you think that you found? Uh, I think I found it in the fractional form, but I was gonna do the math and see if it matched the decimal form. Okay. The radius. So let's just say the radius is one sixteenth. You take one divided by sixteen, that'll tell you what the decimal form is. Okay. So one divided by sixteen should give you sixty two and a half thousandths. Yep.
Don't forget, you guys are masters of the optic comparator. And typically, you love the optic comparator too, so I'm surprised that you guys aren't there yet. <laughs> That one might be hard to do because you're you're not gonna like a shadow. You're probably not gonna shadow that. So I think that I think what I would do is flip it upside down and gauge block it from the table to the to this section. That'd be my stack that way because this is you know this is flat. And then to that. So see what I'm saying? Take gauge blocks, stack them up on the grand table. I'm like, Somebody's asking that. So I don't know. How do you think that you would find that? It's like the film molten salt. If you do not, you just need to hit get what you hit, what you what you got. Sorry, um, what you just whatever. Uh, yeah, so you got to get a radius dimension in there. Um, but yeah, that looks right. Make sure that you're getting. Uh, there is a parallelism and flatness on there, and uh, make sure you get the parallelism, parallelism and flatness. Um, what is the one little machine? It's like portable for us. Like a pocket serve? Yeah. Does that measure flatness? No, 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 no. It measures surface finish. So uh, with the little radius thing, you're going to have to do a little radius gauge. It's like 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. That could very well be slipped away. It's like a whole idea. But that's just 2,000 difference. So it's just mm -hmm. Yeah. Just the height that you're going to be able to measure on, on okay. the gauging that you have. On the uh, uh, two one four lines. Uh -huh. We've just got the two lines. It is. So we use the hard gauges like this. Those? Yeah. Or we use the pocket surf. Which is a digital one. So this would be middle, but this would be mouth tail.
Could be able to check parallelism on this, right? I think you could check parallelism on that. If I lined up with this side, you could have to with this side. Mm -hmm. Every one of those squares is 5,000 stone, so you're going to have to kind of take that into account. As right. you're doing it. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like it's deviated at all. Yeah. Uh, no, you'll oh, put yeah. those on top. Yep. Yep. Um, flatness and parallelism. How do you think you should check flatness and parallelism? So what's, what, when you measure flatness, how do you measure flatness? You cannot use that. I mean, you could use that. You could come with some feeler gauges and some stuff. Flatness is going to be a little hard to measure. Um, Especially with that, yeah. You do it with an indicator and a high gauge or a magnet. You have to chuck it up somehow. You have to hold it in a way to get. So flatness is the measurement of highs and low spots on that plane. So it's going to take an indicator and a mag base, setting it up on a granite table, um, and and coming across the top of it. So it's, that's going to take a little bit of work. Parallelism. Um, is just between two surfaces. So how 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 parallel those is what's parallelism to? Uh, is it a step um, or a ledge or something? Oh the three eighths here. Okay. Between here and here. Yeah. So that one is a little easier probably to measure. Um, I would probably still do it with an indicator. Uh, I'd stand it up on its side, put it in a little vise and um, stand it up on its edge, run across the indicator. So um, if you want, there is that granite table over there. You can also, um, there are some granite tables out in the shop. You could take your indicator and mag base and, um, yeah, you got a granite table there. Uh, you've got indicators with you. Um, if you need some clamping help, I've got some clamping options. You just need to tell me which one. Do you have a mag base? It's in the box. 
seen that black dog for about 25 years. Yeah, yeah. So, Justin said he was going to be replaced for me, but. Clint said that? Okay. Did you do that when you did your janky catastrophe the other day? It, it was like way before that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if I clamp this, I have to indicate it by this way. Somehow. Yeah. Or, or you could set it this way and then indicate it bottom up. That's that was, that's the, probably the most difficult part on this thing is is kind of finding flatness and parallel. I would not be using this indicator. I would be using my test indicator. This is a travel indicator. Let me do it now. have no more spares. I got everything but parallelism. Got everything enough parallelism. All right, what you didn't get done, we will finish up tomorrow. So it's going to be here tomorrow. I would assume that you were excited to be here every day. I am.